Hello and welcome to the look ahead for Friday the 10th of May with me Fiona Sincotta, Senior Market Analyst at City Index. So overnight we've got Japanese household spending data and then tomorrow in the European session we've got UK GDP figures, the minutes to the latest ECB meeting, Canadian unemployment and universe, US uh, Michigan confidence as well as several Fed speakers. So just to start off, we'll um, kick off with what's going on in the UK after the Bank of England left interest rates on hold at 5.25%, but the vote split was more dovish uh, than the previous meeting with two policymakers voting to cut rates. That does mean that the Bank of England is a step closer to cutting interest rates. The market's now pricing in a 50% probability of a rate cut in June and is fully pricing in a 25 basis point rate cut in July, uh, sorry, August. Now data tomorrow, we've got GDP data expected to show, it's the preliminary reading for Q1 and is expected to show that UK uh, economy rebounded in the first quarter of the year, rising 0.4% quarter on quarter after um, tipping into recession in the final quarter of last year. Now data comes, we've seen upbeat PMIs from particularly from the service sector, we did see a some re brief recovery in the manufacturing sector as well. Um, so potentially a, a, a rise out of the recession will not only show that the recession was short lived, but it's also an encouraging sign um, for growth for the year ahead. Now, if we do get some stronger than expected growth, that's going to be some encouraging um, figures for the pound. But the pound uh, is struggling struggling about that, around that 125 set level, particularly as it looks like the Bank of England is going to be cutting interest rates before the Federal Reserve. Now, the pound did fall towards the 124 level. I think it was lower around 124.50. But it actually has recovered after some weaker than expected U.S. jobless claims figures. So we're still seeing the, the pound U.S. dollar sort of around that 125 level. Now, if we get a break below, uh, if we do get sort of um, stronger than expected data, we could see a bit more of a recovery in the pound towards that 125.50, which is where the 200 SMA is. Um, as we move up to then towards the 126 level. Um, on the downside, weaker than expected data could see a move back towards that 124.50 and then on to 124. But I think broadly speaking, given that the um, Bank of England looks like it could be starting to move on rate cuts before the Federal Reserve, that does mean that the, the pound could struggle to really move uh, meaningfully higher. Um, just looking at what else we've got going on. So I said we've got Japanese household spending. That's expected to fall uh, at around 2.4% annually in March, which is not going to be doing the yen any favours. Now, if we can see here, this is the US dollar Japanese yen. It has been struggling after we saw those two suspected interventions last week, which caused the pair to drop down to that 152 level. Now, we have seen a recovery as the yen has continued to weaken. The yen's weakened even though um, we saw, for example, more hawkish than expected minutes from the Bank of Japan. The market's pretty much shrugged those off and pushed above that 155 level um, as it heads towards the rising trend line res uh, resistance sorry, at 156.50. And then ahead of there, we'll be looking at the 158 level. Um, on the downside, immediate support, if we get some weaker than expected household spending numbers, then that's going to mean that inflation outlook weakens and we could uh, see the yen fall. Um, sorry, you see the yen fall under those circumstances. That's where we'd see the USD Japanese yen push higher. Um, if we get stronger than expected data, yen could strengthen, could see a test of that 155. Below 155, there's minor support at 153.50 and down at 152. So just moving on now, we've also got, as I mentioned, the uh, ECB meeting minutes. This is Feels like quite a long time ago now, the ECB meeting. But I mean, the central bank has pretty much um, pointed to a June rate cut. 
I think, you know, we've seen that inflation is cooling towards the ECB's 2% target. We've seen service sector inflation is also proving to be less sticky than anticipated. And um, and so I think with that in mind that, you know, we could see um, the ECB comfortably start to cut interest rates in June and particularly given that um, we've also seen the, the Bank of England look like it's going to move towards cutting rates sooner rather than later. That's going to be an encouraging sign for the ECB, um, even if the Fed looks like it's not going to be cutting for some time. So here we've got the euro US dollar. Now, if we get slightly more um, dovish sounding minutes, then we could see the euro US dollar continue to move away from the 200 SMA that it touched um, at the beginning of the month. We'll get a move towards it's, uh, a test of that 107 level. Below 107, um, then we've that's the February low. That's going to be the sort of the next level to look forward to on to look to on the downside if we do have some more hawkish, uh, sorry, dovish than expected minutes. If we do find that there is um, the minutes show some disagreements between the hawks and the doves, and perhaps the hawks are, are, are more prevalent in the minutes, then um, perhaps we could see the pair move back towards that 108 level. That's the 200 SMA. That's the level to be watching on the immediate upsize. And above there, we'd be looking at the uh, 100 SMA. Um, and that's around the 108.40. It's also that falling trend line resistance that we can see there. Um, above there, look 108.80, which is the April high. And just finally, we've also got the um, University of Michigan Consumer Confidence. Now, interestingly, we've seen um, the jobless claims data come in um, a bit weaker than expected today. That followed last uh, Friday's weaker than expected non-farm payrolls. And this sort of weakness is also being matched with a sort of hawkish commentary from Federal Reserve officials. So, you know, we've had Susan Collins, the Boston Fed president today say, sorry, yesterday say that she thinks interest rates need to remain restrictive for longer. Neil Kashkari earlier in the week was saying, that, um, you know, he questioned whether the Fed will be able to cut rates at all this year. So um, so I think basically the data at the moment, if it's weak data, then that does prove to be good news for stocks because it's being interpreted as um, the fact that the Fed may cut rates sooner. Now we've got, this is the Dow Jones. We can see it's extended its recovery. It's moved above the 100 SMA and also the 50 SMA. It's actually now just testing 39,284, which is the February high. If we get a rise above here, then look towards that 4,000, sorry, 40,000 um, record high. On the downside, if, um, you know, we've got Fed speakers as well, if we hear um, sort of a continuing chorus of, of perhaps more hawkish sounding feds rather than just the high for longer. If we get any suggesting um, that we might be looking towards rate hikes, then that could be a real dampener for stocks and we could see a retest. On the downside, look out for 38,500 as an immediate level of support. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you like what you've seen. And if you have, then please do give this video a like. Otherwise, please do press follow to subscribe.